All right, so on this problem, I've got a five kilogram block sliding along at three meters per second, and it runs into a spring, and the spring is gonna compress, but the complication is that I have friction this time. So I'm gonna have kinetic friction and static friction, but only in this area. So this is the area where it's rough. It becomes rough right under that spring. So you can imagine maybe the spring scratched up the surface from doing this experiment over and over again if you need some kind of plausible explanation. Uh, my spring constant, I like to get things into the picture, is 120. Um, anything else, just my coefficients, and I'll just leave them up there. So I want to get the maximum compression of the spring, and we're going to attack this with, with conservation of energy, but I have a non-conservative force doing work, and that's the friction force acting through this distance, which I'll call x. So what we're trying to solve for is x, and I have friction doing work for a distance of x. Let's go ahead and write down our conservation of energy equation. All right, in this case, I have this term here for a non-conservative force doing work. That's going to be the friction doing negative work and reducing the total amount of energy. All right, then I can look in the initial state and ask what kinds of energy were there. Well, the spring was relaxed, and it was all the kinetic energy of this mass, so I'm going to have a one-half mv squared. And then I have friction doing work along this stretch, where certainly the friction force is going to point in the opposite direction of the motion. So I'm going to get a negative on that. So I'll just write down there's a minus sign on that. It'll be the size of the friction force multiplied by the distance that it acted through. And then I end up with my final energy state. In this picture, everything is motionless because I'm at the maximum compression, which means this thing is at its turnaround point. So there's no kinetic happening. All the energy is stored in the spring. So that's 1 half kx squared. And it's the same x. So this is a sort of a slightly less formal or partially formal approach to energy conservation where I didn't write down the energy contained in the spring in the initial state and then say that it must be zero in the next step. Um, I really skipped a lot of things that, that were zero here. I didn't write down the kinetic energy in the last, in the final state and say it was zero and that's fine. As long as you have clarity, that's all you have to write. So then if I put in some numbers, I get one half times the mass and then my speed squared, and then I need the friction force. So my friction force, its magnitude is gonna be mu k times the normal force. This is a flat surface, nothing tricky going on. So my normal force is gonna be just mg. All right, so my friction force is gonna be mu k, that's 0.3, mg. And it acts through a distance of x. And then on the right-hand side, I have a 1 half k times x squared. So this is a, I don't think of the first example we've seen, maybe the second example where I end up with a quadratic equation. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and use technology to solve this, but I need to clean it up first. So I have 60x squared on the right-hand side. And then I'm going to add the linear term. That's the x-containing term. I'm just simplifying its coefficients right now. I'm just trying to smash them in the calculator. I add that over to the right-hand side, which makes it positive. So I have positive 14.7x. And then this term, I'm also going to move to the right-hand side. So half of 5 times 3 squared. And I get 22 and a half for that with a minus sign. Okay, so I'm going to plug that into Maxima, and it looks like that was actually the last thing I did in Maxima, so I don't even have to show it again. Um, I get a negative value and a positive value for x. The assumption was that we were working with a positive value of x here, so you're going to keep that one. Um, the negative one has an in interesting interpretation, but it's still going to be non-physical, so I'm, I'm going to save the time and not go into it right now.
and I end up with 0 0.502 for x. All right, the big picture summary of what happened there, I had a bunch of energy in the motion of the block. It ran into the spring. As the spring was compressing, some energy was permanently d deleted by friction. The rest of the energy is stored in the spring. All right, part B. Show that the block breaks loose and turns around. All right, so that has something to do with the force exerted by the spring at this maximum compression point. So there's some spring force pushing this way. And I'm trying to figure out Oh, I should use a capital F for that. Now it's a weird capital F, but that's okay. Um, I'm trying to figure out, does that exceed the maximum static friction force or not? So I've got to calculate the size of this force, calculate the maximum static friction force, and compare them. So my spring force, the magnitude of it is going to be given by kx. And that's 120 newtons per meter times the compression at this point, which is 0.502. So it's about 60, but I'll, I'll do a little better than that. So 60.2. Well, my maximum static friction force is given by mu s times the normal force, which again is mg because it's just a level surface and there are no other vertical forces acting besides gravity and normal force. And plugging in my numbers, I get... 0.6 times 5 times 9.8. A maximum static friction force of 29.4 newtons. So because the spring force at this compression far exceeds the static friction maximum, this thing is going to break loose and it's going to take off. So that gets our, our proof done. All right, number C. Compute the speed of the block once it returns to the smooth surface. So I can work from, from this initial state if I want. Or I could even go back all the way to the beginning of the problem and compare that to the, to the final state. So my final state is going to happen here. The block is finally back on the smooth surface, and I'm looking for some V final. So again, one option is to say, OK, I have this much energy stored in the spring, 1 half k times this x squared. Friction deletes some energy on the way out. And then I have kinetic energy in the block at the end. Um, or I could just start all the way at the beginning, which in some ways is desirable, because at least you don't get compounding rounding errors when you do it that way. And I could say friction does, does work through this distance of 0.502 on the way in. And then it does more negative work for 0.502 on the way out. So I would just basically double that term. And then I'd be able to find the final kinetic energy. So I think I'll take that approach of just going all the way back to the beginning and comparing to all the way at the end right here. And so I'm going to say, if I really start at the beginning here, E initial plus any work done by non-conservative forces is equal to E final. And again, this is now the final state that I'm imagining. The spring is un uncompressed. And so my initial state, I had 1 half times mv squared. So let's call it mv initial squared. Work done by non-conservative forces. Well, I had friction deleting energy on the way in and then on the way out again. And each of those terms is going to look like a mu k mg times x. And you're going to get two of them, one on the way in and one on the way out. So I'm going to have minus 2 mu k mg. Again, that piece is the friction force. And then the reason there's a 2 here is because I deleted this much on the way in and then on the way out again, and the x was the same in both cases. And then I have equals E final. So that's 1 half mv final squared. So plugging some things in. 1 half times 5 times 3 squared minus 2 times 0.3 times 5 times 9.8 times x, which I know now is 0 0.502, is equal to 1 half times 5 times v final squared. 
and now I just have to smash a lot of numbers in my calculator. So here I go, half of five times three squared minus two times 0.3 times five times 9.8 times 0 0.502. And then I'm going to multiply that by 2 and divide it by 5. And I've isolated v final squared. And then I will square root the result, and I get 1.76 meters per second. Now, you want to double check and make absolutely sure that your final velocity is less than the initial one when the problem started because I know for sure some energy has been deleted during this process by friction. And so, yeah, it at least agrees with that.